Assalamu alaikum students. Today we will solve the MCQs of solutions in college. MCQ number 1. 0.5 molar solution of NaOH contain. Now look at here. What is molarity? Molarity is number of moles number of moles per liter of solution. Per liter of solution. Okay? Solution. Now look number of moles per volume per liter of solution okay this liter is volume now look at here first the d option 10 gram of NaOH in 1 gram of solvent this one is incorrect okay because this is 1 gram and here molarity means molarity is in volume okay and here it is solvent but for molarity we need solution so this one is incorrect now look at the a option 40 gram of NaOH in 1 liter of solution now we know that molarity is equal to so molarity is equal to number of moles per liter here look at 40 grams first we will find the number of moles 40 gram divided by we know that the molar mass of NaOH is also 40 gram and multiply divided by 1 liter okay divided by 1 liter so this one cancel this one and it will give one molar solution not 0.5 molar okay this one will give one molar solution so it means that this one is incorrect now look at the B option, 20 gram of NaOH in 1 liter of solution. Now look, here molarity is equal to number of moles, let's find the number of moles, 20 gram divided by 40, multiply by 1 liter. So it will give 0.5, okay, 20 divided by 40 will give 0.5 and divided by 1, so it will give 0.5 molar. So it means that here option B is correct, okay. Look at the C option, here 80 gram of NaOH. Now we know that molarity is equal to, let's find the number of moles, 80 divided by 40 and multiply by 1 over 1 liter, okay? So here it will give 2 and 2 divided by 1, so for option C the molarity will be 2 molar, okay? Here it will, this one will form 2 molar solution of NaOH. So option B is correct here, 0.5 molar solution of NaOH contain 20 gram of NaOH in 1 liter of solution, here option B is correct. Second. 0.5 molar solution is so first of all we have to understand that what is molar and what is molar let's see what is molar let's suppose we have a container okay and we have solvent 1 kg of solvent okay 1 kg of solvent and when we add so solute okay let's add solute here like 140 gram of NaOH let's suppose okay when we add 40 gram of NaOH in 1 kg of solvent, okay, in 1 kg of solvent, so it will give 1 molar solution, okay, 1 molar solution. When we add 40 gram or 1 mole, 1 mole of solute, 1 mole of solute in 1 kg of solvent, it will give 1 molar solution. It will be like, look, it is water. Now, we know that when we add something to the water, like we have add 1 mole of solute in 1 kg of water. So, it means that its amount would be greater here, okay? Its amount would be increased. Its amount would increase here. Now, this one, here it is increased. So, it is 1 mole solution. Now, look at here. What is molar? Here, 1 molar is, let's suppose we have a container and there is one liter of solution okay one liter of solution in that solution we have some part of solute and some part is of solvent okay so these two parts when combined it will give solution so it is one molar one molar solution solution okay we know that of solution okay number of moles of solute in one liter of solution this is called molarity now look at both okay here we have taken the one liter solution 1 liter solution which means that the sum of part it will be solvent and some part will be solute and look at this one 1 molar we have taken 1 kg of solvent okay 1 kg of solvent example water we have taken 1 kg of solvent like water and after that we have added 1 mole of solute okay 1 mole of solute so it means that in this case water is greater okay in this case water is in greater amount let's suppose we consider solvent as water okay we have taken 1 kg of water and here in the molar case we we have take 1 liter of solvent okay we, we have take 1 liter of solution it means that in this case the solvent will be in smaller amount okay the solvent will be smaller as compared to this case so it means that 
the concentration of one molar will be smaller. The molar solution will be dilute. Okay, and here in this case, the molar solution will be concentration concentrated. Okay, the molar solution will be concentrated because in molar solution the concentration of water is greater. The concentration of solvent is greater. Okay. So when we, we know that when the solvent concentration is greater as compared to solute, then this solution is dilute, okay? Here in this case, the solvent concentration is, the amount of solvent is less, okay? Here in this case, the amount of solvent is less. So we know that when the amount of solvent is less in a solution, so the, this solution is concentrated in nature. Now keep one thing in your mind that molar, molar, okay, molar solution is always dilute as compared to the molar solution okay molar solution is always dilute as compared to the molar solution now let's back to the mcq look at here to the mcq 0.5 molar solution is less concentrated than 0.5 molar solution so this one is correct okay the molar solution is always dilute as compared to the molar solution less concentrated as compared to molar has same concentration as that of the molar no 0.5 more 0.5 times more concentrated this one is also incorrect has concentration equal to 1, this one is also incorrect. So here, option A is correct. Keep one thing in your mind that molar is dilute and molar is concentrated. Third, mole fraction of water in tap water. Now, what is mean by tap water? We know that in tap water, some of the impurities is also present, okay? In tap water, some of the impurity is always also present. So it means that the mole fraction in that tap water, mole fraction of pure water in that tap water will be less than 1, okay? Less than 1. Let's suppose mole fraction of pure water okay pure water is equal to let's take as one okay the molarity mole, molarity is equal to number of moles is equal to one and let's suppose the number of mole we know that here we take the total mole okay one plus let's suppose take the moles of impurity as 0 0.0000001 look this is much smaller amount okay this is the molar number of moles of impurity now if we divide these two, you will get 0 0.999 mole fraction, okay? So it means that the mole fraction of water in tap water will be less than 1, okay? Look here, the, molar, the impurity is very small, but still the mole fraction is less than 1. So here option B is correct. 4. Molality of pure water is... Let's solve this one. Look at here, we know that molality is equal to mass in gram divided by molar mass multiplied by thousand look when we take the mass in gram then what we will do we will take thousand divided by mass in gram if you want to take in kg then you will not consider this one okay you will only write one over mass in kg and if you want to if you want to consider this one in grams then you have to take thousand divided by mass in gram now let's find the molality of pure water we know that the density of water is one gram per centimeter cube okay this is the density of water and we also know that one centimeter cube is equal to one ml okay one centimeter cube is equal to one ml so i can write it like one density is equal to one gram per ml now here in this case in order to find modality we know that the solute is also water and the solvent is also water both is water okay solute is water and the solvent is also water now we will take the mass in gram of water is one gram okay now you put here one gram in place of mass in gram put one gram and we know that the molar mass of water is 18 okay and here write thousand and mass in gram of so solvent mass in gram of solvent is what one gram okay mass in gram of solvent is also one gram because the solute and solvent both is water that's why we are taking the same mass okay we are taking the same mass because both is water now when you divide 1000 with 18, you will get 555.5 molar, okay? So the molality of pure water is 55.5. Here option B is correct. Now let's find the molarity of water. Here it is the molarity of water. We know that molarity is equal to mass in gram divided by molar mass and 1000 divided by volume in ml. If we want to take the volume in ml, then we will write 1000 divided by volume in ml. If we want to take the volume in liter, then we will write like 1000, 1 over 1 liter, okay? We will not, in case of liter, we will not consider this 1000, okay? Here we know that density of water is 1 gram per ml, okay? Density of water is from here, it is 1 gram per ml. Now, we also know that 
the solute is water and the solution is also water we know that for molarity we use solution here okay and for molarity we use solvent here okay so here we know that the solute and the solution both are water okay so we will take the mass and the volume is same okay look one gram divided by one ml okay so mass is one gram divided by 18 molar mass of water is 18,000 divided by one ml look density is equal to one gram divided by one ml so we will get volume as one ml when you divide these two okay you will get 55.5 molar solution okay so it means that the molality and the molarity of pure water is same okay now let's find the normality normality is equal to molarity multiplied by number of hydrogen ion or number of hydroxyl ion okay now look at here we know that molality molarity is 55.5 multiplied by we have to take one of them okay we know that in water there is one hydrogen ion or one hydroxyl ion so the normality will be 55.5 normal okay so it means that the molality molarity and the normality these three are same for pure water so here option b is correct for molality of water let's another 14.6 gram of nacl are dissolved in 250 ml of the solution molarity of the solution will be now we have to find the molarity of solution now we know that molarity is equal to number of moles divided by molar mass multiplied by 1000 divided by 250 ml okay here the ml is given so number of mm, mass in gram sorry this is mass in gram okay mass in gram is equal to 14.6 divided by 58.5 so here we know that if we divide these two we will get one over four 14.6 fours are 58.5 okay here we will get four and we know that four ones are four and here we will get 250 okay 250 so if we divide these two we will get one molar okay so here the molarity of the solution is one molar okay look here option a is correct look at the sixth one a five percent mass by volume sodium chloride means that so here we we know that five percent mass by volume mass by volume means that five gram of NaCl dissolved in 100, 100 ml of solution. Okay, here we will take 100 ml. Okay, 5 percent is here. So, 5 gram of NaCl dissolved in 100 ml of solution. So, look at the option A it's 1.25 gram of NaCl dissolved in 25 ml of solution. If we divide these two by 4, so we will get this one value. Okay. 1.25 gram of NaCl dissolved in 25 ml of solution. So here option A is correct. Okay. If we divide this value with 4, we will get this one. Look at the B. 5 gram of NaCl dissolved in 50 ml of solution. This one is incorrect because this means that 5 gram of NaCl dissolved in 100 ml of solution. Okay. Now look at the C. 10 gram of NaCl dissolved in 100 ml of solution. This one is also incorrect because it will be like if we multiply this 5 with 2 okay if we multiply this 5 with 2 then we have to multiply this 100 with 2 also then in this case if it was 200 ml then it would be correct okay here it is 100 ml so this one is incorrect 10 gram of initial dissolved in 100 ml is incorrect okay if there were 200 ml then it would be correct but now it is incorrect look at here 5 gram of initial dissolved in 20 ml of solution this one is also incorrect okay for 5 gram we have to take 100 ml okay for 200 ml we have to take 10 gram okay so we have to multiply either multiply here 2 on both sides or here in this case they have divided these two value by 4 okay that's why option a is correct here 7 sum of mole fraction of all the component of a solution is equal to 1 okay now look at here let's take the example of a whose is 5 molar okay which is 5 mole or the a is 5 mole okay b is what b is 10 mole okay now let's find the mole fraction of a so we will get 5 divided by 15 okay here we take total moles and if we find the mole fraction of b we will get 10 divided by 5 okay now let's 5 ones are 5 and 5 threes are 15 5 sorry it's 15 okay 15 here we will get 5 2s are 10 and 5 3s are 15. Now if we sum up these two, we will get 
1 over 3 plus 2 divided by 3. Let's take the LCM, 3, okay? And this will also give the answer of 3, okay? So we will get the answer of 1. Now look, the sum of mole fraction of all the components in a solution here, the sum of mole fraction of all the components in a solution is equal to 1. So here option B is correct. 8. Parts per million is equal to now look at the A option mass of solute divided by mass of solution divided by mass of solute. So this one is incorrect, okay? Look, the correct is mass of solute divided by mass of solution. This one is correct, okay? You have to take the solute in numerator and solution in denominator. Now look at here mass of solute divided by solvent. This one is also incorrect because in parts per million we take the solution, okay? We take solution, not solvent. Look at the D, moles of solute divided by mass of solution. This one is also incorrect because we have to take the same thing, okay? We have to take the same units in these two, okay? Either we will take the mass, we will take the volume for these two. Here the numerator is moles and the denominator is mass. These, these three are different, these two are different, okay? So that's why this one is incorrect. So here option B is correct. Mutual solubility of conjugate solution is affected by temperature only, okay? The solubility is only affected by temperature changes. But there are some solutions like if we take the example of NaCl, okay? It is not affected by temperature, okay? It is not affected by temperature. But here the mutual solubility of the majority of the solubility is affected by temperature changes. That's why here option A is correct. And this NaCl is just an exception, okay? It is not affected by temperature. It is not affected by anything, okay? Look at the tenth. The temperature at which two conjugate solution merge into each other is called critical solution temperature or it is also called upper consultant temperature upper consultant temperature what is upper consultant temperature it is the temperature above which the two solution two conjugate solution merge into each other that's why it is called upper okay above which above the temperature above which two conjugate solution merge into each other so this is called critical solution temperature or upper consultant temperature during dissolution Hydrated ion of the solute are attracted by solvent dipole. This process is exothermic, okay? First, what is hydrated ion of solute? These are any charged species present in water, okay? Any charged species present in water is called hydrated ion of the solute. Now, why it is exothermic? Because, let's suppose when we put the NaCl in water, then what will happen first? First, its, its bond will be broken, okay? The Na plus and Cl minus bonds will be broken. Now this is endothermic, okay? When bonds break, then this phenomena is endothermic. The next step will be when the solute and solvent is attracted, like let's suppose Na plus, and in this case the water, the oxygen will attract this Na, okay? Or oxygen will attract this Na. Now this process is exothermic, okay? Exothermic. Look, hydrated ion of solute attracted by solvent dipole. Here it is attracted by solvent dipole. So this step is exothermic. Now, if we want to, if we want to calculate the heat of a solution, whether the whole reaction is exothermic or whether the whole reaction is endothermic, then what is here? If the whole reaction is endothermic, then in this case, this energy will be greater as compared to this exothermic. So it will give the whole reaction as endothermic. If this energy is greater as compared to this one okay if this one is greater as compared to endothermic then the whole reaction will be exothermic but here in this mcq only this one the step two is required okay they are saying uh, they are saying about the step two that whether this one is exothermic or this one is endothermic so this step two is always exothermic okay here option c is correct crystalline compounds containing chemically combined water at a fixed proportion is called hydrated compound okay look at the option a in hydrides Inhydrides mean when water is removed, so this one is incorrect. Look at the B option, hydrides. Here, hydrides mean that uh, compound of hydrogen with other element is called hydrides. Like when hydrogen is combined with other elements, then this will give hydrides. Let's suppose we take the example of lithium hydride. Look, this one is hydride. Only hydrogen is present, not water. But here in this MCQ, they are talking about the water, okay? Look at the C. So here option B is correct. incorrect. Okay, this one is incorrect. Look at the C. Inhydrous compound. Inhydrous mean that when water is removed from the compound. So hydrated compound, this one is correct. Okay, here option D is correct. Lowering of vapor pressure depends upon. Look at here option C is correct. Number of solute particle, not their molar mass. We know that lowering of vapor pressure is colligative property. And colligative property depend on two things. 
first is number of solute particle okay number of solute particle and the second one is nature of solvent okay nature of solvent so in this case here option c is correct number of solute particle not their molar mass look at the a number of solute particle and their nature this one is incorrect okay because it only depend upon the nature of solvent number of solute particle and their charge density this one is also incorrect Look at the D, number of solute particle in their molar mass. This one is also incorrect. Okay. Qualitative properties depend upon the number of solute and the nature of solvent. Next, cerium sulfate shows exceptional behavior whose solubility is. Now look, the solubility of cerium sulfate decreases with the increase in temperature. Okay. Its solubility decreases with the increase in temperature because the enthalpy of cerium sulfate is negative and the negative mean exothermic okay so for in case of exothermic what happen when we increases the temperature then its solubility decreases okay so here option d is correct according to robert's law lowering of vapor pressure is directly proportional to the mole fraction of solute okay look lowering of vapor pressure is directly proportional to the number of mole fraction of solute okay this one is the statement of robert's law look at the next one some of the liquid mixture given below are either completely miscible or partially immiscible. The pair of partially miscible liquid is, we know that the partially miscible liquid is phenol water system. Okay, and phenol water system is partially miscible. So here option C is correct. These examples are present in your book. Okay. Next, one molar solutions of different salt were prepared in laboratory. A student said that solution having minimum freezing point will have now here is the formula that depression in freezing point is directly proportional to one half factor okay one half factor now look at here one half factor for this one is two okay because it has two i and for this one i is equal to three and for this one it has two ions calcium and carbonate so i is equal to two for this one and look at the b i is equal to four okay i is equal to four for this one it means that greater the i so greater will be the one the lowering of freezing point look it has when i is directly proportional to the lowering of freezing point depression in freezing point then what will happen here is also freezing point is inversely proportional to the tf okay now look we know that this one has high lowering high lowering of freezing point so it means that its freezing point will be minimum okay its freezing point will be minimum here the b is correct option b will have the minimum freezing point in all these okay because you should memorize these two equation okay the relative lowering of freezing point is directly proportional to i and freezing point is inversely proportional to the relative lowering of vapor pressure when the relative lowering of vapor pressure is greater it means that the freezing point of that one solution will be smaller okay so here option b is correct Comparing the boiling points of different solution of sodium chloride. Solution having maximum boiling point among the following. Now, here the modality is given. So, we don't have to write the one half factor. Okay, we don't have to mention here one half factor. We know that elevation in boiling point is directly proportional to modality. Okay, so greater the modality, greater will be the elevation in boiling point. So, look here. Here is the molarity greater, okay? So it means that elevation will be greater here. But here the required is boiling point. Maximum boiling point is required. Now, boiling point is directly proportional to the elevation in boiling point, okay? Memorize these, these two equation, okay? That boiling point is directly proportional to the elevation in boiling point. So here, molarity is greater. Elevation will be greater here. And in turn, the boiling point will be maximum for this one, okay? So here option D is correct. Next, solubility of gases in water increases with temperature. This one is incorrect. Because when we increase the temperature, then at that time the kinetic energy of gases increases. In turn, the solubility of gases also decreases. Okay, With the increase in kinetic energy, the solubility decreases. Look at the B. Decreases with pressure. This one is incorrect. Because the solubility of gases in water increases with pressure, not decreases. Is not affected by pressure and temperature. This one is also incorrect. It decreases with temperature. This one is correct. Okay. When we decrease the temperature, the kinetic energy decreases and in turn the solubility of gases in water increases. So here option D is correct. All of the following are colligative properties except so 
exception is required here okay this one is also colligative property this one is colligative property this one is also colligative property so it means that option d is the exception okay option d decrease in volume this is not the colligative property okay so here option c option b is correct 0.5 molar solution of sucrose content now look here this is 0.5 molar so there is two possibilities that either the mass in gram of sucrose would be half or either the volume of solution would be double means 2000 ml okay now let's here option a is 171 gram of sucrose in 500 ml of solution okay now if we find the molarity of these two it will give 0 0.25 molarity okay not 0 0.5 here both are decreased here we have to find we know that two solubility two possibilities are there either the mass in gram would be half okay mass in gram would be half or either the volume would be double okay volume would be double so in this case we will get the 0.5 molar solution so for option a we are getting 0 0.5 0 0.25 molar so this one is incorrect look at this one b 3, 342 gram of sucrose in 1000 ml of solution for this one we will get one molar solution not 0 0.5 molar this one is also incorrect 342 gram of sucrose in 500 ml of solution for this one we will get the two molar two molar solution of sucrose this one is also incorrect now look i have told you that there must be two possibilities either the mass will be the mass of sucrose would be half or either volume would be double now look at the d option here the mass of sucrose is half okay and the volume is remain constant so it means that option d is correct here okay for when we find the molarity of this one we will get 0.5 molar solution look we know that molarity is equal to mass in gram here the mass in gram is 171 and molar mass is 342 okay multiply by 1000 and look the volume is also 1000 ml okay so it will be 1000 this one will cancel this one okay and it will give 1 over 2 so we will get 0.5 molar solution look 0.5 molar solution it will give so option d is correct look at the next one 0.25 molar solution of sodium chloride contain 29.25 gram of sodium chloride in now look we know that molarity is equal to mass in gram divided by what molar mass multiply 1000 divided by volume in ml okay now bring this volume here and molarity here okay exchange their places okay 1 ml is equal to mass divided by molar mass multiply by 1000 and divided by what molarity is 0 0.25 molar okay now if you calculate this one you will get what 29.25 divided by we know that sodium chloride is 58.5 okay multiply by 1000 and divided by 0.25 okay so this one will give 1 over 2 okay 1 over 2 and now 2 ones are 2 and 2 500 is are 1000 okay now let's divide these two okay you will get you will get to 2000 okay you should divide this like if i move this point here and here i will get 50 and two zeros okay and 25 so if you divide these two you will get thousand transfer okay thousand ml so look at here option d is correct okay look option d is correct look at here if you want to take screenshot then take screenshot from this okay you will get 2000 ml answer now look at the next one kb and kf stands for now look at here option c kb stand for ebullioscopic constant and kf stand for molar freezing point okay molar freezing point constant so here option c is correct this molar freezing point constant is also called karyoscopic constant okay this one is also called karyoscopic constant here kb is this one and kf is this one so here option c is correct mole fraction of ethyl alcohol in a solution is which contain 0.5 moles of ethyl alcohol and 5 moles of water now look we have to find the mole fraction of ethyl alcohol in a solution let's suppose mole fraction of ethyl alcohol okay here 5 mole divided by 10 okay so 5 plus 5 5 ones are 5 and 5 twos are 10 you will get 0.5 mole fraction okay so here option d is correct a mixture of water and ether is an example of partially miscible liquid here option a is correct this one is present in your book okay non-polar solutes are soluble in non-polar solvent due to dispersion forces okay 
the force between non-polar and non-polar is dispersion forces. So here option A is correct. Look, dipole-dipole forces is between two polar molecules, okay, between two polar molecules, two polar solutes and solvent. Dipole-dipole forces are present between polar and non-polar. Dipole induced dipole force is present, okay. And hydrogen bonding is present in compound of nitrogen, oxygen and hydrogen, okay. Ionic compound are dissolved in polar solvent due to, look, ionic compound and polar. So, look at the D option, ion dipole forces. So, here D is correct, okay. Ionic compound and polar are due to ion dipole forces. The ion induced dipole forces is between ionic compound and non-polar, okay. Instantaneous dipole induced dipole forces are due to the non-polar, okay. And dipole induced dipole forces are due to the polar and non-polar. So, here ionic compound and polar forces are ion dipole forces. Relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to the mole fraction of the solute. Okay. Look here, option B is correct. This one is the relative lowering. Like P0 is, is the, it is the pressure of solvent minus the pressure, vapor pressure of sol solution divided by vapor pressure of solvent, which is equal to X2. Here, X2 is the mole fraction of solute. So, here option B is correct. Which one among the following ways of expressing concentration of a solution does not depend on the temperature? Now look, we have two categories of concentration, okay? One is temperature dependent and one is temperature independent. Now those which contain volume, okay, volume, which is where volume is involved. So it will be temperature dependent, temperature dependent. While those which contain mass, so it will be temperature independent. Now look at here, molarity is moles per volume, okay, number of moles per volume. Molarity is number of mole per kg of mass. So it means that this one is independent of the temperature. So option B is correct here. Normality also contain volume, okay, and mass divided by volume percentage also contain volume. So we know that the temperature temperature changes the volume. When we increase the temperature, the volume increases, and when we decrease the temperature, the volume decreases, okay. So that's why the temperature independent are those where mass is only involved, not the volume. So this one was the last MCQ of solution and colloids. If you have any problem in any MCQ, then write in the comment section. Allah is.